welcome to the R tutorial. Um, we'll be primarily focused on the ggplot2 package. So it is a basically a graphics package that is in R that allows you to do um, simple plots like bar plots, um, line graphs, time series, and so on. So this tutorial primarily focuses on this package. Um, just a show of hands, how many, how many of you are actually familiar with the R programming language? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, like not too advanced or like just intermediate or like never used it before. Okay. Basic. Basic. Okay. So yeah. So I guess this is sort of really perfect for you guys. Um, it's a little bit different from your regular R tutorial because um, the regular R tutorial you see will teach you how to do R programming, but this one will primarily focus on this package, and you'll be able to create plots that are look a lot nicer then you could plot them in a regular R tutorial. So let's get started. Okay. Oh. Okay. Try now. There you go. So like I said, this tutorial primarily focuses on the GGPlot2 package. Um, as well as the comparison between what the graphics look like with this package as compared to um, the, the base R graphics, uh, base R plots. Um, so that, that was the introduction to the ggplot2. And then we'll primarily also look at um, some of the data frames and the simple data sets that we'll focus on in this tutorial. Um, and more importantly, um, this will primarily focus on several different types of graphs. So like the scatter plot, the bar plot, the stack bar, histo histogram, and box plot. Um, I find it much easier to go through um, examples on how to create these plots, rather than give you like definitions on all the, the ones that you see on the cheat sheet. So it just tells you, okay, this is how you code it, but it does not go through like several examples. So these examples do build up, um, but not to like such an advanced extent. So it'll be able to follow very easily. So even if you have no experience in R, I don't think the syntax will give you any trouble in, doing, in learning ggplot2. And then there's some cool time series on the very end to round off the tutorial, as well as some other tips and functions, which I think are um, quite good. Th those I actually wish that I knew when I started off ggplot2, so I included um, some of them at the very end to round the tutorial off. So ggplot is um, R, an R package for data exploration and producing plots. It produces fantastic looking graphics and allows one to slice and dice data in many different ways. Um, it can serve as a replacement for the base R graphics um, and contains a number of defaults for web and print displays and common skills. So since 2005, ggplot2 has actually become widely used in industry as well as in typical statistics, statistical analysis. Um, this tutorial primarily focused on how to analyze data and how to display them, rather than, uh, rather than the statistical analysis aspect of that. And in contrast to base R plots, um, ggplot2 allows the user to add and alter com um, components in a plot at a high level of abstraction. So the only downside to this abstraction is that um, the computational cost. So if you have a large amount of data, um, ggplot2 will run a bit slower than the regular plot function in R. So that is the only downside I would see to this. And if you have like half a million data pieces, which I thought you will ever see, unless you work in some high frequency um, training environment, um, unless that's your circumstance, then ggplot2 will be able to plot your data very easily. But um, if you are looking at a million data pieces, then um, this will not be a good um, aspect for that. Oh, Just okay, cool, okay. So the components are ggplot2. Um, it is based on the grammar of graphics. So basically it is the idea that every graph um, can be built from the same types of components. So a data set, a set of geoms, which are basically visual marks that represent data points, and a set of coordinate systems. And to display these data values, um, you can, for instance, specify um, the size of your points, coloring, x and y locations, your legends, and um, and the different and the different categories of your data. 
Uh, we'll go through some of the uses of uh, these components by, like I said, by example. So we'll build them up one by one based on bar plots, line plots, and so on. And you'll soon see that once you understand what each of the component does, um, you can easily create any type of graph that you want um, with simple commands. Okay, so some of you are probably following along. So um, to get the package, it is just install packages ggplot2. And then each time that you you run any ggplot2 functions, um, you have to call um, the library. You, you have to call the function itself. Um, otherwise, you will not be able to use any of the function ggplot2. And this is a simple data set that I pulled from, from a website, so the which we'll be using in this particular tutorial. Um, I think um, if you look at the, we posted the code for the presentation. Well, this presentation is actually um, coded in R as well. So we posted the code on, up online. So you'll be able to find the, um, the um, data set on that in, in, in the code as well. So if you can follow along. Um, so basically what the data set is, it's basically a set of data of um, students, um, their test scores and um, 0 to 800, um, their GPA 0 to 4.0, um, 4.0 being the highest, and they're ranking the class. And um, it's really it's a really simple data set. And then the admit basically shows that whether or not they're admitted to a to a graduate program. So um, so yeah, there's different components to this data set, but that's not the most important part. Our most important goal here is to how to visualize this data set using ggplot2 package. And basically, just a short intro to the data frames. So um, ggplot2 is particularly based um, as data. So each of the data set that you input into the um, yeah, in, into the into R Studio are um, data frames. So you can so that's the so you input the data frame using the read.csv option, and then um, and then you can and then by selecting each of the uh, components, like you can see how many students have GPA greater than three point eight, or how, and how many of them are admitted. Um, you can use some of the functions shown here. Yeah. Uh, where did you get the CSV from? Oh, it's a website. Okay. Um, it's in the it's in the um, it's on the it's on the slides. Like yeah. Yeah. Um, the slides are actually changed to the uh, HTML page, so we just run it. Uh, so, so the slides from the oh, so. okay. Um, but yeah, I, I actually um, saved it in my own local files, but it's not up on the event page, but. Um, yeah, but yeah, but if you look at the code for the slides, it should be it, there should be a link in there that mm -hmm. directs you to this particular file. Okay, so to do a um, regular um, scatter plot in R, uh, that's part. This is this is done in R base graphics, so the plot function. So um, so I graphed GPA versus test scores. Um, to show how many, to show you that if there's a correlation between a high GPA and a high test score on a standardized test. And the coloring just basically shows you, like if a student is ranked one, then it's a black color, and if it's ranked two, it's a um, red color. And then so if the rank three is blue and rank four is green. So you can see that it's a little bit messy and you will not be able to tell which students uh, is a rank, uh, which rank they are, and um, there's definitely like no relationship between GPA and test score that we see in this point. Uh, but the point of this, point of this is to, so that's the code to show you how to do a typical scatter plot in base R uh, graphics. So you specify the colors of each of your, um, uh, each of the ranks. So like rank one is black, rank two is red, and then three, four is blue and green colors. And then, um, you plot it using a plot function and you have a legend. So that's how you do it in base R graphics. And we will show you how to do it in um, ggplot2. So like the dollar sign is a selector there? Yeah. Cool. So it selects that particular column. Okay. Yeah. And then, yeah, so then like the, the second line, the plot part, um, emit dollar sign GPA, that's like the x axis, and, the the, and then the test score, that's your y axis. So the dollar sign selects the um, the particular column. Why do you need S numeric? Oh, because like we want to change them to like uh, to like different factor levels. So like 
um, the rank right now is like one, two, three, four. I, I don't think you can. I don't think you have to do it as uh, as numeric, but sometimes they might put it as a string. So, so I'm just asking because I don't know what it does. So. Oh yeah, so like um, it because when you input into a data frame, some of the factor levels like um, if it's like a um, categorical variable, it might be inputted as a string. So even if you write one, so it might be a string. So as numeric, change everything to numeric values. So that's how you do it in base R graphics, but um, the tutorial is to show you how to do it in ggplot. Okay, so to produce the same plot in ggplot2, you can see that code is considerably um, shorter and much neater. So all you have to do is to um, have the package the library ggplot, and to create a scatter plot, um, you just say ggplot, and then you have your data, which is the embedded data set, and the AES, that's, um, that part is called um, aesthetics, so it's basically defined as um, aesthetic mappings that describes how val variables in the data are mapped to visual properties of the geomes. So um, instead, of, instead of the aesthetic brackets, you have your x and y axes as GP and test scores. So as you can see here, they don't even have to specify which particular column, like the dollar sign. You don't have to specify which column that you're looking for directly. So all you have to do is say, oh, x, I'm looking at G GPA, or y, test scores. And the call, that's um, instead of aesthetic, that's your color. So because we want each rank to be a different color, so like before we had like, we actually had to specify like, we actually have to specify color as to numeric, admit, admit um, dollar sign rank, but now um, ggplot basically automatically does the color for you at the very end, which is the color, color function. And then the two additional statements at the very end of this, um, geom point, you can specify the size of your points on the plot, so that's one additional feature that you can use. And then xlab, ylab, and ggtile, that's um, explanatory, so that's just GPA, test scores, and the title of your plot. So this is much neater, and once you do that, look at this. So it definitely looks a lot more um, professional, I guess, than um, the R-based graphics, because the R-based graphics are particularly used in statistical setting, and especially if you want to present something to industry, especially on your co-op terms or on um, your full-time work. I think that to present any type of data visualization with ggplot2 is a lot more neater and useful um, than, uh, much more neater to look at, professional than the R-based graphics. So that's, so this is the plot that was created by the code that you've seen previously. Um, so although the color is selected automatically with the, um, with the color function, so like you see the call equals rank, um, you can actually specify your own color scheme um, you can specify your own color scheme if you like. And the only problem we see here is that the, um, the rank is, the colors are based on the continuous <coughs> scale. So like, um, if it's rank one to rank two, then it's like the color scheme actually changes like a gradient. So you're not specifying everything as a discrete scale. So in order to make the rank like a discrete variable, so like one, two, three, four as its own category, like the numeric function does, um, you have to specify one more. So before we seen that under the color, we have call equals rank. So now in order to specify um, which, which particular rank that a particular student is in and which particular level that they're in, you have to transform them, transform them using the factor function. So factor rank. So that basically um, transforms each of, your, um, each, of your, each of your ranks to um, different factor levels instead of looking at a continuous scale. And then, um, and then after you've done that part, um, the only addition that, that was different from the previous, previous slide is the scale color discrete. So what that does is that because you're looking at, um, because your color scheme that you're looking at was at a continuous scale, the discrete function allows you to specify each of the dots by, um, um, by factor levels instead of one to four continuously. So in the end, this is what it looks like. So as you can see, the factor levels that you created with the, um, with the rank, it converts all your um, 
legends to a discrete level, so one, two, three, four, instead of continuously. So if the student does rank to one, that's going to be shown in red, as opposed to uh, before it was like everything between three and four, it's gradually the color changes to um, to light blue. Is, um, is the color assigned this time uh, you picked, or it's automatic? Automatic. Oh. That's why, yeah, it's automatic. You can pick them yourself as well. But I think the automatic feature is actually really good to answer that question because, like, before we had to pick our own colors in. Yeah, we had to pick our own colors in um, in our base graphics. You got to say, oh, which color goes together, and then so that does take some time. So this is actually really easy for you to pick out, and so it actually automatically does that for you. And uh, what's the data type? Um, you look at the, what the factors are. Well, factors the data, are data type. type where basically assigned different levels, and to each level it's the size of an So it's I think it's a very discrete case. It's supposed to be meant for categorical variables. Well, it kind of treats it like I don't know. You can kind of think of it like a string, just like different categories. Instead of thinking, oh, you wear rank one, that's a discrete integer value. So you had to treat that one more like a string, kind of like a category. So that's what the factor level does. Unlike strings, though, they're stored efficiently as integers, so you can operations. Right, like yeah. And then one more thing that you can add based on your code is um, is that you can specify one more dimension to this data is the shape. So meaning that if because um, the data set had if the student was admitted or not admitted to their graduate program of choice. Um, so in this case, if it was a, if the student is admitted, then we can specify a sh particular shape. So instead of displaying everybody as um, circles on the on the scatter plot, we'll display if the student is admitted. Um, if if yes, we'll display like a triangle. If no, it will be a um, it will be a square. So so in the end, the plot is completed by the scale shape discrete function. So you can just say okay, um, but based on the admit data, if it's admitted and it's one shape, if it's not admitted, it is another shape. So that's what the second part of the code. Does. Yeah, so you can see there's a big change to this now. So we added a further dimension to this data set, meaning that if the student is admitted, um, it is a triangle shape. And then you can see that um, if in this data set, you can actually visualize to see if the student admitted, what is their GPA, what is their test score, and what is their rank in the class. So you see all four dimensions in this data set very easily based on the shape function. And if it's not admitted, the student will have the assigned a um, be assigned a regular circle. So all of this is done automatically based in um, in the ggplot2 package instead of using the base R graphics where you're, um, you actually had to assign each shape using the PCH function or the size of your points using the CX function within your plot. So this is everything is done automatically based on skill shape discrete. So you don't have to even specify your shape. Um, the third plot is really simple. Um, so this is the bar plot. Um, it builds on the same idea as the scatter plot, except that um, there is a new type of function that is created called geom bar plot. Yeah, geom bar. So it, it looks almost exactly the same as as the previous code that you've seen for the scatter plot, except that because everything is grouped by rank, so we see how many students are at each rank. Um, instead of in, in the first line of code, you see that on the x axis is the factor level rank, so 1, 2, 3, 4, instead of a continuous variable based on the GPA. And then the fill, um, the fill is basically the color of your plot, so like it automatically assigns a different color to each, um, each rank of students, so you can see on a bar plot. 
And then the only difference with this, um, the other difference with this particular code and the previous one is that you specify geo bar, which allows you to create the bar plot. And the one thing to notice that is that in the geom bar function, um, there is a width. So that specifies how big that you want the you want the bars are. If you don't specify how big that you want the bars are, you will actually you will actually kind of look like a histogram in this case. Um, there are actually going to be no spacing between the different bars. So you so that's one thing that you have to watch out for. Um, so by now we've introduced some of the different types of skills that we've used. And there are a lot of other different skills besides skill fill discrete, skill shape discrete, which we saw that automatically assigns a shape to particular student if they're admitted and if they're not admitted, that assigns another um, discrete um, shape. And then uh, skill color discrete, that just assigns a different color to each factor level that we've seen. And then there are many other types of um, skill functions, um, which is used takes a similar format. And that's based on skill x, 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 and y, y, y. So this is basically a chart that shows you the different types of skills that you can have. So the color and the screen, fill, line type, shape, size. So it's like a reference sheet, so you can, so there's different types of things that you can do with the skill um, discrete or skill fill discrete um, functions. So you can specify all that into your um, into your code, if you like. Uh, feel free to stop, stop me if you guys have any questions. So the third plot that we'll be introducing is the stack bar. So that adds on another further dimension to the bar plot. So as you can see, we're kind of building up on um, the different plots that we're creating. So we started off with a scatter plot, which we've seen how it's done with the regular R base graphics. And, that, and we've done a bar plot, which is actually very simple. And now to build upon the code that was shown with the um, regular bar plot function, um, this is how you will create with a stack bar. So you would only, so this is basically um, shows you how many students in each rank were admitted. So before at each rank, one, two, three, four, we only showed you how many students there were. Now we actually wanted to see how many of these students were actually admitted to their um, program of choice. And to create this type of plot, what you do is you add one further dimension to this. here is that because we have the stack bar, we have to specify how many students were admitted and how many students were not admitted. And basically, instead of filling by rank, which we saw earlier, so here is that here you see the fill equals factor admit before is factor rank. That's the difference here. The factor rank basically allows you to specify how many students were in each rank. But the factor admit actually breaks up how many students were in each rank to admit it and not admit it. And then everything all, all stays the same. Now, like I mentioned earlier, um, without specifying the width of your bar plot, it actually kind of looks like a histogram. So the next, next plot that we'll be creating is a histogram. Um, so before I want to introduce the, the idea of the histogram and how to create it in ggplot2, um, there are two types of functions actually in ggplot. That one of them is the qplot, the other one is the ggplot. So both of them are actually create the same types of graphs, but um, qplots um, Q plot specify less dimensions and the ggplot functions. So you can use both interchangeably, but preferably um, you should use the ggplot function instead of the qplot, because ggplot you can actually specify more colors, more factor levels, as well as the different types of graphs to be created. Um, but you can also use qplot as well. 
So I introduced qplot here because I want to show you how to use the qplot function to create a histogram. So basically, this is, a, this is the same data set, but now it shows you um, how many students were in each range of GPA. Um, so this is the bins are broken down by 0.1. So it's all the way from 3.0 to 4.0. Uh, 4 and this is the graph is created with the qplot function. This is a ggplot. So if the qplot function looks almost identical to the ggplot, um, function except that the difference here is that instead of adding every dimension by the plus sign, um, this one um, creates a plot entire, the entirety of your plot, uh, like how you would do it in our base graphics. So everything stays the same. So instead, so instead of, um, before we have seen geom bar function for the bar plot, so here it's geom histogram. So it's specified directly within the function itself rather than outside of the function. And then the bin width basically specifies um, how big your bins are, so it's 0.1 for each um, GPA range. And this is how you would do it using ggplot function. So, um, like I said, the qplot function does have some limitations, like specifying specific gradient colors that you want on the plot to get a more professional feel to this. So that you can also use the ggplot function, like, like we've seen earlier, to create the histogram. So it is essentially the same as the rest of the graphs we've created, with the only change is the geom histogram function, where you are allowed to specify the bin width and the fill. And then the fill count basically um, creates a single color based on if the number of students were, um, if a high, large number of students fell into specific um, ranges, then that particular bar will be darker than the other bars. So, that would, that, so that's like a gradient fill to this. And then, um, and then for gradient fill based on different colors, you can use the skill fill gradient function. So also the one of the skill functions where um, based on the number of students, so if the count is very low, then it's created using a green color. If it's high, then it's uh, a red color. So what, what does AES do? I keep seeing So it's like the aesthetic mappings. Aesthetic, it stands for aesthetic? Yeah, it stands for aesthetic mappings. So where you um, have the um, x, y axis, where you can specify your colors and based on different factor levels, so you don't technically see this in um, the base R plot because um, there's no, you create the colors yourself, you um, specify the sh shape yourself, the size of your points using CX or PCH, and you don't do that, um, you don't do that in ggplot. You can do that directly within the AES, um, within the AES function. But it all depends on what type of graph that you're creating. So that's what the plot looks like from the from the previous slide. So the gradient that we created at the very end using using scale fill gradient with the low count and the high count red. So that basically specifies uh, how deep that you want your colors to be. Um, if you want, if you were to do this t same type of analysis with um, the regular R base plots, then you're probably going to look at um, additional coding based on the colors that you wanted, rather than a simple specification. Um, we will also go over the box plot. So this is the box plot that is created with the um, with the ggplot package. So the only difference um, with this plot and the previous plots that you've seen is the specification of the um, of the function from the particular graph. So, so before we've seen geom bar, geom bar that specifies uh, our geom histogram that specifies the type of plot that you want. But here is geom box plot, so everything else remains the same. 
um, you're able to completely change your um, code from a previous uh, previous plot to, to the box plot set uh, very easily instead of specifying, specifying what type of box plot you want in base our plots, which are a lot more um, complicated than in, this case, than in this case. Sorry, so when you have this plus, is this like adding a property? Yeah, you add this a property to it. Okay. So like, unlike the regular R plots, uh, which kind of looks like which kind of looks like the Q plot function, but without the Q, but without some of the geomes there, um, where you you have comma and then you add all the different properties. But the ggplot to specify the different properties, you use a plus sign added in instead of using everything in the same bracket. And then of course you can write like all all lines of this code, like his plus all lines this code in one line if you want. Like I only showed it in two lines. So sh to separate out and more clearly to show you what each part of this um, plot does, like the different titles and the different, yeah. I believe also the way it's structured plus, it makes it very flexible. So whatever things are modular, so if you, this changes that, changes this, so it, you can stack on many different things. Yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. So are you able to change So say you want to see how many, like how, like how many students were admitted or not admitted, like see so the breakdown by bar. Yeah, I believe you can. Um, I believe you can do that. Either probably not through the ggplot2 function, but you can do that by specifying the data frame directly. So like at the very beginning of this of these slides. I had a section on um, data frames where you're able to sort through the data frames and show you how many students, how many students had um, were admitted and had GPA over through my day. So you can directly count that yourself, or you can look through the GPA plot too as well. But I, I think it's easier to just write the code comment by yourself instead of looking through GPA plot too. So it's at the beginning of the of the slide. And then the only, only, only other thing here to notice that uh, we also use the skill fill discrete function here because we specify the admitted data if the student was admitted, then we give them a label, no, no or yes. Now, if you actually don't say, if you actually don't have this line of code that shows you skill fill discrete, admit yes or no, then the difference here is that um, if you actually don't have that line of code, what you will see instead of the word admit at the very, instead of seeing the word admit or no or yes, you will you will automatically see something like zero or one and then factor admit. So if you don't want code to show up on your plot, you have to specify, um, you have to specify something like skill fill discrete and name each part of your plots. So that's the important part of that. We also have, um, besides the other graphs that we've shown, we also have um, some time series and regression analysis. You can also perform this in ggplot2. Um, I know a lot of the regression analysis that we've done in maybe in staff, search rewind and some of your linear regression courses are done in um, the regular um, R plots. You can do a lot of these advanced um, graphics in ggplot2 as well. Is some of these functions can actually automatically do model selection for you and plot it directly on the graph using some of the ggplot packages. So basically, this is basically an like, economics data set from the um, from one of the R packages. So it's actually called economics. So if you do um, if you do head bracket economics, like. If you actually want to see the data set, it's. If you actually want to see the data set, it's like this. But that's the data set we use. It's actually within R. It's like a pack. It's like a data set within R. So it's not the one I downloaded from, from the website. So that just shows you the first five lines of that, of that file.
So to create a line plot, it, it essentially uses the same idea as the previous plots that we've had. So the, like the bar plot, the line, uh, the line plot is similar, is that, is that we use the geo line function. Of course, you can, add, you can have various other aesthetic mappings within this, this function as well, but for now we've kept it simple with just geo line. And basically this specifies um, this graphs this entire data set into a line plot based on x axis as your date and y is the unemployment rate. And everything else remains the same as before. So that is something that is created using the um, ggplot um, line, line function. And then to perform some statistical transformation to this series, um, to create that line that you see across and to see the trend in unemployment rates throughout the years, you can use this function, which is a geom smooth function. So this is basically ggplot's built-in model fitting tool that allows you to plot the fits from any model of your choosing. So um, you can use this to directly plot linear regressions on your plot. So this is not linear regression, obviously, but, it, but, but by specifying the geosmooth function, by simply adding geosmooth at the end, it creates that line for you to see the trend in the data that you're looking at. So it's much simpler to specify rather than using the, um, rather than performing your own model selection um, using the base R graphics. So can you not see the coefficient for example? No, not in this case, no. It just visualizes the, the, the data set. Actually, I think for the um, for the line plots, I think you can. For the line ones, I think you can. I think you can see the coefficient for the line ones, but I'm not too sure on the um, on that particular one. Yeah. So yeah, this this one is basically the line plot based on geo smooth. Um. Besides the various other um, ggplot um, gg plot plots that we've shown, so we've seen the bar plot and how that's built up to a stock bar, and then how that's built up to a histogram, and then we've also seen the histogram and specifying what the different various other layers look like, the different colors and the different shapes by just by just changing your aesthetics by by one parameter like the different factor levels by specifying like. Skill fill, sh uh, skill shape discrete, skill fill discrete. You'll be automatically selecting colors based on the ggplot two function, and everything else is done automatically instead of using um, instead of specifying your own shapes and color itself. Um, besides that, there are other some other um, options and tips that I think are quite good, which I found while working with ggplot two, um, which I actually which I knew when I started this. So one of these. Um, so one of these things that I wish I knew when I started ggplot was the um, par and rough for this function. So if you're familiar with R, this function, what it does is that it basically puts your plot um, in a layout format in a sheet. So that line of code actually, if you're not familiar, it's like, like parameter C22, so what it does is that, like say you have like a, um, so this divides your page actually into like, so it's into, into four corners, and then you, you can actually create four plots, so like one, two, three, four. And then if you have like uh, three, two, then it's like, it's like three, two. So it's like by, um, or, or, or two, three in that case, then it's like by row one column. So it specifies how many of these um, graphs to put in one page. Um, this is in R based graphics, so you have a lot of plots to plot. Then um, you can actually loop through, um, you can actually loop through your plots and create this graphic easily based on that function. But what I found was that if you're trying to create this in ggplot, um, ggplot doesn't actually have the par and um, for C function. So you can't actually create um, several ggplots on one page. So meaning that um, 
you we don't have that function, you don't know how to specify how many GT files to find on one page. So one of the other things that um, users online were producing is a multi-plot function. So this is just a user-defined function. Um, you can check out the code for it later. It's in the slides. So um, it's in the slides that uh, we posted. So basically, it's this function that allows you to um, plot multiple plots in one page so that you don't have to use the par and plot C function to do so. And then this, but this, is, this basically uh, plots the same idea as um, par and plot C. And there's other function that I know that also does uh, that does the same type of um, graph graphs as this, and you can also search through them online. But um, but yeah, in general, you you cannot use the, a similar type of function as part on plot C in ggplot. So the other thing I didn't talk about was um, how to control the limits of your scale. So if you want to do um, x and y, um, the limits are also done using the same the same scale function that we've seen. So scale fill discrete, scale color discrete. So this is like scale x continuous, scale y continuous. So basically it specifies uh, what is your limit on both an x, y scale. Or additionally you can just use x limb or y limb, which is the same thing as you see in the regular um, plot function um, in, in R. So that's, so you can also specify adding that to your GG plot you can specify um, what is the limit of, on your on your plots as well. And then to specify like um, choosing x and y axis breaks, so meaning like um, how many ticks that you want to appear. So like if you want to take out one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to ten, um, then you can use the x scale continuous by making breaks from one to ten, and at uh, each um, tick it's one and then all the way up to ten. And then the cool thing that you can do here is, um, this is basically a data set on like the ratings of a movie and how many people voting on them. So, so like if you see like the rating of two, then it's horrible. And then if it's like a rating of five, that's okay. And then eight is awesome. So instead of actually specifying like, so if I ever actually want my breaks at two, five, eight, you can actually specify, oh, two is horrible. And then five is okay. And then eight is awesome. So you can also do that with ggplot too, which is something that you don't necessarily see with the, um, with the R plot function. So this allows you more control in the X, scale X continuous. So there's actually a lot of nuances that actually do go on in that particular um, particular function, like the scale X continuous, scale discrete fill, and scale um, color discrete. So it really depends on what you're looking for in that particular type of plot. And um, this tutorial itself will probably not cover all that, um, all of these uses of how to when to set the breaks, when to set the labels. And it all really depends on the data set that you're looking at. So, um, and you can search up the documentation for the various types of skills to use, which I have a slide in the middle that shows you the different types of skills that are available that you can use in this particular case. And then, because you're also using the, um, uh, because the par and c function, um, sometimes when I was performing large, graphing lar large amounts of data or multiple graphs in the page, you will find that sometimes your page does get overcrowded. So when so sometimes you want to remove the, you can also remove the legends in here. And then so by specifying no legend here, then you don't, you don't then you can choose not to, specif not to show um, the legend on the particular plot. And then, um, so there are some other links to the other resources that are part of the ggplot that you can, um, so this is basically a tutorial, basically the introduction to the various plots that you can create in ggplot2. Um, so these links, the, like the cheat sheet that you received shows you some of the more advanced um, ggplot functions that is, um, that is within the package. But, um, but most of the time that I actually find that you don't necessarily get to use a lot of these functions. Especially um, if you're if you're simple, if your goal was just to visualize a set of data and see how the data set 
change from over time, especially historically. So even with large amount data sets, some of these functions, um, I don't find it um, that you use quite often, but there's a link at the end to the cheat sheet. And then also um, color selection. So you, instead of using ggplot2 to actually specify the different colors, um, you can actually uh, select your own colors. So this link will go over all the color names. It's actually quite, quite interesting instead of specifying different hex values for each colors. Um, so this actually goes into the different colors that you can specify. And you'll be actually surprised to see, um, to see that um, actually selecting colors is actually very important. So it's actually very important. So, um, so yeah, I should probably take a look at that. And then basically, and the final link is basically an ana anatomy of a plot. So this basically shows you the various aspects of um, the different functions that we've gone over. So like the different uh, skill x continuous, skill y continuous, and the various other functions that are part of a plot that we haven't gone over here, and um, it's all in this link. So you will able to you will able to see um, what a ggplot to ggplot looks like as compared to a regular R plot. I think that's it. I think that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. And if you have any questions about the code itself, um, um, I can help you set up that in R Markdown. So basically, this entire presentation is created in R as well. So everything is, so the so the code like everything is created in R. So everything, um, er, so everything is like all these texts are in R. So you can automatically generate it in as an R presentation on your own computer. We'll post a link to the um, CSV. Yeah. So can you talk a bit more about this idea of the grammar of graphics? What what does that mean actually? Uh, ggplot two is based off a uh, book called Grammar Graphics. Uh, it's basically how to think about how to think about graphics. That's the reason why there's aesthetics, there's uh, different shapes. It's based off all of those aspects. So that's that's why it's called uh, why uh, G plus is very get very well connected to uh, the term graph or graphics because that's what that's the philosophy behind what G plot is. And like, um, like I said, like you might think that color selection is not important, but um, it is actually really important. You'll be surprised how many times I've heard people say that blue and red doesn't go together, and how do I pick these colors? And and yeah, in um, in the regular R plots, you actually have to pick them co these colors yourself. But ggplot2, these colors are picked automatically for you. So sometimes you do, yeah. I uh, just want to point out the color selection is actually really important because yeah. it helps differentiate how uh, uh, they have various, uh, various items. So uh, if you have a very good plotting scheme, you can save lives. If you're going to get help, you can save lives by picking the right color scheme. Yeah, and especially if you're giving a presentation to a senior management or a board, um, it's actually really important. Color is really important, trust me. So yeah. <laughs> So have you tried other visualization packages like matplotlib for Python or d3.js? Like I haven't heard of them, but I, haven't, I, I, know, I know what it can do, yes. Okay, so like, when would I, is like, what does ggplot do better and worse than those alternatives? Uh, I could supply that. Uh, the advantage of ggplot is it's very modular. So you could uh, change the settings as much, um, like very much more flexible than MatPublet or uh, generic R plot. So you could you could uh, manipulate the graphics to the way you want to look like. And yeah, that's the that's the power of the plot too. So is the custom building modularity basically too. Yeah, you can set up kind of your own little grammar for how the graphics should look. Set up a bunch. Basically, it's like objects, right? Uh, when you're summing those objects together, you're actually combining them, all their aesthetics, all their components, etc. And uh, you can make a set of objects that you use frequently to visualize a given set of data. And it's just really fast for that. Um, I found live by find I am spending a lot of time just setting up the same kind of stuff over and over again. That may be my failing in Python, but that's my experience. 
about D3.js? Uh, just one more question. Is a modular a module called Gplot or Python as well? It's based up around Gplot too. So, <laughs> so it's Python is trying to get uh, a version of Gplot two. Like um, like a WPF GUI using Java, like Swing package, or no, no, like, um, so like, you want to transition between two views, right? Okay. So you have a view where you're like plotting all the males, and you want a view when you plot all the females, and you want to just transition between the two, like click the, the bubbles, the radio buttons. Um, yeah. uh, there's other packages for that. Weird. I think Shining is actually going to be doing that too. Yeah. Any other questions? So what exactly is a genome? And um so it's like so Basically, it just allows you to specify, like in that, in this regard, it does. It's like it does. It's like a name to specify the different types of plot that you want to create based on the different data, data points. So um, it's like a specific syntax that is particularly used in GGPlot too. So each genome has the same set of aesthetic markings. Yeah. So like meaning like that, like. So like, so like in the geom box plot, you can specify the aesthetics, and then in the geom um, in the geom box plot, you can also specify similar types of aesthetics. Yeah. So it's based on the plot that you want it. Similar but not the same. Well, yeah, similar not the same, but. It really depends on the data set you're looking 